Joining me now, Congresswoman Barbara Lee, Democrat from California. Thank you so much for coming back on the show tonight. Given this pretty dramatic filing from your colleagues on the 1-6 committee suggesting Trump was behind a, quote, criminal conspiracy related to overturning the election, surely they now have to make a criminal referral for Trump to the Justice Department. In fact, what is the DOJ waiting for? Well, uh, Chairman Thompson and his committee have been very thorough. They've been very deliberative. And they want to make sure that their uh, recommendations are solid. When you look at the attorney general, he's doing the same thing. Uh, this is a very serious moment, a very serious case as it relates to our democracy. And when you remember, I want you to remember that the attorney general filed seditionist charges against the Proud Boys and the Oath Keeper. I mean, that is, in essence, treason. He took his time. The lawyers made sure they had the case built in a way that it was... Uh, the, the objective facts and truth were in that case, and he charged them with sedition. So you can't rush this. You have to make sure every I is dotted and every T is crossed because, yes, no one is above the law. And uh, I'm really pleased with how the select committee is moving. And I want to applaud Chairman Thompson because he and his members are doing this in the correct way. So, Congresswoman, let's talk about the situation in Ukraine now. You've been a longtime critic of U.S. military interventions abroad. Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky, uh, for days now, has asked the United States, has asked NATO to enforce a no-fly zone over his country. Today, he said, if they won't do that, can they at least give more uh, planes to Ukraine to fight with? What is your reaction to this debate over the no-fly zone, to Zelensky's request for planes? We need to uh, help determine how to de-escalate, not escalate. Enacting a no-fly zone uh, could be perceived as, and it is in many ways uh, seen as an act of war, and, and that's an escalation. And I think President Biden and our defense officials are absolutely correct. We, we are trying to figure out how, first of all, my subcommittee, which I chair, we're working as we speak to try to determine how much humanitarian and refugee assistance, how the loan guarantees, all of the survival kinds of mechanisms that we can fund, we're working on right now. But we also need to make sure that uh, our European allies do the right thing and help uh, the Ukrainian people in ways that will help de-escalate rather than continue to escalate. I mean, this is uh, what a, a million um, people have left, refugees, people are getting slaughtered every day. I mean, Putin is on, a, on the move. I mean, he does want to reshape and remake the Soviet Union. Then this is about, is democracy going to succeed or is a autocracy, autocracy going to succeed? And so we have to make sure we do everything we can do to support the Ukrainian people. They're proud, they're strong, they're resilient, they're fighting this battle. We have to help them in ways we can, but we cannot escalate, nor can we allow troops to be inserted into a combat role uh, into Ukraine. And the president has said very vocally, no troops, no combat troops, none of our troops are going to be on Ukrainian soil because we cannot allow this to happen. And 40 of us wrote a letter, 43 of us, bipartisan letter to the president reiterating that uh, if they decide that such circumstances change, and we don't think they will, that they would have to, under the War Powers Act, come to Congress for an authorization to use military force. But the president said they're not going to do that and that we have to keep doing everything we can do to help preserve the country, help support the Ukrainian people, and help de-escalate. Congresswoman, you famously voted against the authorization for the use of military force after 9-11. Um, you opposed the invasion of Afghanistan. You were the only member of Congress. Uh, you've recalled before getting death threats and being called a traitor and being attacked because you broke with the national consensus after those uh, horrific attacks. Today, people who even suggest, I don't know, making concessions to Russia, ruling out NATO membership for Ukraine to try and de-escalate, or any other kind of compromises that involve, I don't know, Russia getting its way in any shape or form are immediately denounced as stooges of Vladimir Putin. Do you see any echoes today of the sort of national groupthink on foreign policy that led to some dangerous mistakes after 9-11? Well, I think what I see now in terms of what happened after 9-11 is that more members of Congress and the public are war weary. And what's taking place in Ukraine reminds us that we have to mount every diplomatic initiative we can. We have to enact sanctions. We have to do everything we can do to make sure that the Ukrainian people succeed, that they're safe, 
the, the slaughter stops, but also that we protect uh, the democracy that uh, they so proudly have fought for. And let, and let me tell you, this does not stop at Ukraine's border. I mean, when you look at uh, what Putin has done in terms of interfering, in terms of trying to reshape democracies, no country is uh, exempt. Look at our own country. De campaigns of disinformation, misinformation, voter nullification. Yes. We have seen this in our own country. That has got to stop. So we've got to keep going, support the Ukrainian people, make sure that we help form formulate a path toward de-escalation, and that's going to be very yes. difficult, but we can't lose sight of that. Congresswoman Barbara Lee, always appreciate speaking with you. Thank you so much for coming on the show tonight. Hi, I'm Mehdi Hassan. Thanks for checking out our channel on YouTube. You can see more of the Mehdi Hassan show by clicking on any of the videos on this screen and make sure you subscribe below to stay up to date on the day's biggest stories. Thank you for watching.